Welcome to Obermatt Investing. We're gonna invest in another stock today because it's our investment plan to invest 50,000 francs over the next six months here in Europe. I've looked at the top tens from this Friday and I realized there are only stocks available from the US and Brazil, which means there are no stocks to pick for Europe. That's not a problem. I looked at the focus stocks and in the focus markets last week, we have published climate leader, climate change leaders, companies that are better prepared for climate change or for uh, the future when environmental restrictions will be tougher. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to the existing website of Obama.com, looking at the top 10 list of last week, which you have now in front of you. Last week, uh, last week we have um, published climate leaders north in Europe and Canada and I'm going to look into this here. Um, so you know this already, we start with the value stocks, growth and safety stocks and that uh, the list below combines everything together as a summary. Now I have a lot of companies that I've never heard about. The only thing I have heard is Carlsberg as probably many other men have too. Um, the others I just don't know. So I'm in an area where I feel comfortable to invest, uh, like Northern Europe and Canada, but these are companies that I've never heard of. Now, I have already bought Nestle. I have already bought LVMH, which is luxury, and Nestle is food. So I'd probably like to have something different now. When I look at the top 10 list uh, for climate change leaders, I see here a construction and engineering company, an industrial machinery company, property and casual insurance, pharmaceuticals, wireless telecommunications, etc. I like to invest in something tangible. You know, engineering I like, industrial machinery I like. So let's look at these two companies. They're both based in Sweden. You can tell here by the little um, SE, that's for Sweden. Um, and they are both extra, extra large. Uh, extra, extra large companies are safe to invest for private investors. So if I look at this, Skanska, uh, how I would not pronounce it, uh, construction and engineering, has a value rating of 83, growth 80, uh, safety 98, combined 100. And Sandvik has 100 in value, 100 in growth, and 59 in safety. I'm not so concerned about the safety value right here. It's still on the positive side. I have the feeling that Northern European countries don't need a special safety margin, but I really like that there's a hundred in growth and a hundred in value at the same time. So I want to first look at this industrial machinery company, Sandvik, and look what has happened there, that they have such a good rating. First, I'm looking at the achievements. Um, the achievements, uh, of course, it's a top 10 stock. It has to in a top 10 stock because we are looking at it, top 10 focus stock as well. Uh, it's also in an industry where the incentives are sound. I think that's important too. There are certain industries where you should invest just because the incentive structure of the entire industry uh, is not good. And of course, it's a climate protection stock because we are looking exactly at that right now. Um, when I look now at the overview, the summary, uh, the research summary of Sandvik and its history, I can see that uh, they have gone through some difficult growth issues in 2013 and 2014, but they are back to growth now. So I'm really interested to see what it has to do with these growth ranks. Let's move down to the growth metrics in detail. Ah, here we have it. Not a lot of revenue for two years, not a lot of pro profit, um, uh, and also pretty meager stock returns. Um, and it's still actually meager right now. So we have a situation where this company has gone through a difficult period. The stock market has, you know, decreased its value dramatically over the past, its price, the stock price dramatically over the past two years, which means now its value is quite good. You know, right here above, if you look at the value rank, it's now 100. Um, I like that, especially since operating wise they're back to 100 in revenue growth followed by profit growth so it's now a good growth story 
I like this med I like this company a lot. Uh, uh, this is something I want to check out more in detail. Sandvik, what do they really do? You know, let's get an in let's get an understanding. Um, discover how modern technology helps us become more climate smart and how we contribute to customers' energy efficiency. Um, maybe we should go to investors and see what we have here. Um, there is not a big overview. Well, let's look at about us. Sandvik is a global engineering group with more than 47,000 employees. Um, and they do tools and tooling system for metal cutting, uh, equipment and tools in the mining and construction industries, products in advanced stainless steel. It sounds all really sensible, down to earth businesses. Um, let's look at the business areas they have mining. Uh, machining solutions with 18,000 employees, um, materials technology, construction, and even a venture capital arm, you know, where they, where they invest in uh, fast growing operations. Really interesting. Um, I like that. Maybe because I don't know the company, it's good to look at the management team. Um, our company, corporate governance, maybe that's more. Let's go back to our company and see where they have the management team. Corporate governance, it's not here. Yeah, it's not here. Well, another option is we can look at, we can just Google it, Sandvik Management and Group Management, Sandvik Group. Here we have it. Huh? Sometimes Google is faster than browsing the website. Uh, we have a young CEO, looks pretty healthy to me. Actually, it's a really young team if you look at that. Um, let's have a look at the, at the CEO just to see, is that new, you know? Um, he is born in 1970, four years younger than me. That's amazing for such a, a, a big a company. And he has been, well, he has been with the company ever since. It doesn't say here. It's not a really good description of the management team. Maybe what we could do and find out more about this, it looks like this is family run. Let's go back to investors. The share, the share maybe something about, you know, writing about insiders. Yeah, that's a good ownership structure is what I really wanted to look at. Um, AB, okay, this is AB. I know this is a big fund in um, Sweden that owns 11% and uh, this AB uh, fund is probably making sure this is a long-term investment. It's not really run by anything that looks, ah, oh, Handelsbanken is in, in, you know, Handelsbanken is invested too, another good sign. I really, I'm gonna buy this stock, I like it. You know, Handelsbanken is a very uh, conservative bank. It was the one bank that managed the Swedish banking crisis the best. Um, I have a, a big, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm very grateful to Handelsbank and also because they are one of the few companies using indexed compensation models, something that I think is much better than what most people do when they compare themselves to their budgets or strategic targets. Handelsbank does it relative and I like that a lot. And they also don't have strongly leveraged um, incentive systems. No wonder this company Sandvik has a conservative, um, uh, is also in the sound incentives group, Sandvik. I'm gonna Google now Sandvik to see what happened. Sandvik AB in London. In London, that's probably where, when I, where I want to buy it. Yeah, it's, it's the first that comes up. Let's have a look. Um, chart not available, it's not so much here, but you know what, what is here is the, uh, the ISIN number, which we use to Google it for our e-banking. Now we are in our e-banking, I need to buy the stock. Um, I have here the two stocks I've already bought last week and the week before, LVMH and Nestle. Uh, they both dropped a little bit, that just happens, nothing we can do about it. The stock prices go up and down. Now I buy a new stock, I click on, uh, 
can't fetch it, and I have to log in again. Okay, uh, let's see what we do here. We log in, and we need to enter a security code. That's right. Where is the security code? It's now N E O S S Z W. And we log in. Here we are. Now we're logged in. And we can go to trading. We buy stocks. We have the icing number. Let's hope that this time searching works. Yes, that's the right stock that we have here. We have the company uh, which costs 103 Kronen. Very interesting. Of course, I don't know uh, what 103 Kronen is worth in Switzerland, but I have Google that tells me it's 11 francs. So I can say I want um, 5,000 divi 5, divided by 11 francs, so I can buy 450 stocks of Sandvik. 450 stocks of Sandvik. I say uh, best because I'm not worried about the actual price I'm getting. I know the traders are going to make some money on me, but you know, I couldn't care less. I want to save time. And um, it gives me the price again in Swedish kronen. And I hope that Google was right that this is not more than 5,000 francs. Um, now the contract was accepted and will they'll, they'll buy that stock for me now. I think that was it. I purchased my first Swedish industrial conglomerate. I'm very happy about that. My portfolio now includes a luxury goods company, a food company and, and an industrial conglomerate. Thank you for watching Obermott Investing. Bye-bye.